Ah, raise your hands, the ones that want me to try to get feedback. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> and well, you always have to ask the opposite question. Raise your hands, the ones that want it to be like this, without feedback. For me. Yeah, there's one focus. Okay, I will try to do it. Without any feedback here, I will be looking at the, the screen there. Well, I had my laptop sleeping with everything, so I will have to set the presentation again, but it will not take much time. Ah, uh, uh, another thing. Can you understand my English? Is it clear, clear enough for you? Yeah, because I know that the former conference was in French. So maybe most of you are native French speakers, right? Right. But it looks like you're understanding me. Yeah, perfect. Thanks for your patience. Number two. the current time. Well, it's 17 minutes later, but does anybody know when the next one starts, when I have to finish, just to try to modify the timing, because uh, I don't have 15 minutes anymore. It should be 4 p.m. 4? Actually, you do because there is a 20 minute break between the end of the ah, talk so and the next one. So, I should do that. Your ah, yes. Well, let me introduce myself. I am uh, Jorge Arellano. It's no problem that you cannot say that. <laughs> uh, and I'm the main developer and the current maintainer of the Dillo Web Browser project. And what I will try to do in this conference is to expose and present the most relevant parts of this browser for the embedded systems and also uh, a small vignette of what comes for the future. And I will give you some demos. And that's it, so let's start. Everybody can see that? Uh, yeah. Can you read that from that demo? Yeah? Good. Well, these are the contents of the presentation. Uh, what's Dillo? When I came here to France, I was surprised at that I'd say 50% of the people know the browser and 50% not. Here in this 
people in, in the this street. audience. <laughs> please. please raise your hands, the ones that know the browser. Yeah, it's like 50, yeah? 50 40%. And I want to know another thing that's very important. Please raise your hands, the ones that are technically savvy, that have really lots of knowledge about technical stuff. I mean, people that can understand if I start talking like GTK, GDK, GLDIB, full tick, library dependencies, and so on. Please raise your hands. Ah, okay. And now please raise your hands the ones that didn't understand that thing of what I said. <laughs> okay. And now the ones that consider themselves fond of computers at the user level. I mean the ones that only use applications and not develop applications. Please raise your hand. Okay. That's a surprise for me. Okay, I will try to orient the presentation to this audience. It is very important, and almost nobody <coughs> does that, because almost nobody cares whether he will be understood. But I'm that kind of person that really cares that the message that I'm talking is understood. Because otherwise, in my way of thinking, I'd better be another place. Okay? So if you don't understand one thing, please say <clears throat> or something. I I want you to, to understand this this presentation. That's it. I will talk about what's Dillo. Dijo in Spanish. Project objectives. I will show you some screenshots. Talk about compatibility and portability the features that the browser currently has. The architecture overview will be minimal. And I will talk about the near future potential, maybe some things about funding, and that's it. And I will try to make it some more interesting with some demos, that's all. <coughs> For those that don't know, Linux are very fast and I will show you how fast. An extremely small web browser that is completely written in C, the C programming language. That means, well, maximum performance, unless you want to write in assembly, of course. And, uh, ah, there's no shot. Does anybody? Actually, in the box, in the I will show this conference in that old laptop that's a Pentium 1 with an amazing 233 megahertz. And I will show you that Dillo is able to render near 145 kilobytes per second on that machine. That means if you have one HTML page that is 145 kilobytes in length, the rendering time would be one second. Yeah? That's very important for embedded machines. Currently, it's a graphical browser built upon GTK1. This is a library of graphical objects, for the ones that doesn't know that. And I say currently because we are porting the browser to full tick. That's another library. And that will allow Dillo to run on even more platforms. I will talk about that with some slides. This is very important. It's a multi-platform browser. It runs on the BSDs, on the Linux, on, well, I will show you, an incredible range of machines, and we expect to make it run on even more.
And this is another that's very important. There is a free software project under the terms of the GPL. This means that you can download the code, and can modify it, and there are no strings attached to it. Yeah? It's just your skills against the code. Or helping the code for that. What are the project objectives? Oh, I should have more. The first one is the most important, the paramount objective. The democratization of internet information access. What do I mean with democratization? I mean that the people that don't have enough wealth or money to buy the current hardware and the internet connection on broadband can access the internet now. Dilo is able to run on this machine and also on a 75 megahertz machine on IFAX, ARMS, and very low power CPUs. So with an old laptop or with a current PDA with a slow CPU, you can use, use the browser. And because of this speed of rendering, it is no problem. It is no waiting. And the other part, I'll explain over here. As the software is very efficient in two senses, hardware resources, I mean CPU consumption is minimum, and the network access is also optimize it in a way that you can connect with that laptop and a dial-up, I mean a telephone line to the internet and have a pleasant, very good internet experience. So we have here two very important optimizations. One on the hardware, and with that I mean the CPU, and the other one on the network. That's bandwidth. You can use a dialog with this. And the rendering is also showing that. And I will show you a demo about that. And the second objective is also very important. Security. Almost everyone is concerned about security today. And now that the web browser has more and more importance in the user experience, the security in the web experience is very important. Billo is built from the ground with security in mind. And so we are trying very hard for our, user, our users not to be compromised. And if you look at the records on the internet, well, Bill is one of the browsers with the less security issues or alerts. Mm -hmm. And privacy, this is another important thing that, well, is taken care of locally. If you go with Bill browsing, there will be no records of what you visited. Bill will not start saving the URLs, the cache, and the history of what you did on your machine. So you can browse, exit Dillo, and that's it. Nobody knows from your machine, and I stress that, from your machine, what you've been looking. Of course, your, of course, your ISP can spy on you. But there's, there are some other ways to circumvent that. But locally, it's not that way. Well, to wake you up, I'll show you a screenshot of how it looks like currently. 
is a slash dot, it's a very popular site among the jeans in person. And the ones that don't know the site well, it's a tables based at site with images, links, and main part, and so on. And this is the rendering that the is currently providing. Ah, here you have the number of bugs that the HTML page has. Today's internet is a mess of HTML. Every single page is called to be HTML, but they are not. And browsers have to try to understand all these dialects. And this is an awful problem for a developer like me. For the user, it's more or less transparent. But here, developers can see what are the mistakes that they made and fix it if they want to do that. Do you know the AI packet? That's a PDA that's small like this. Maybe Philippe, do you have one? <laughs> oh, Philippe is a very good friend of mine. So. <laughs> well, that's the iPad, and that's the screenshot of Jiggle running on that machine. And well, you can count that as an embedded system. And if you want to have information on portable devices, well, you can run on an iPad and several other machines, like the Jopi and several others that you don't know and that I don't know. Is anybody here very interested in compatibility in one of those families? Yeah. You, which one? And health. And health. Health health. Right. Yeah. Any other? Uh, because I have one slide for each one. And that's too much. <coughs> yeah. So I will explain that and hand health. Well, all the variants of QNU Linux, all the BSD, BMP, BSD, Dragonfly, BSD, Open, BSD, BSD, Net, BSD, whatever it is. And with whatever I mean Darwin too. QNU Darwin, do you know that? OSX? Solaris? Yes, we run Solaris. Handhelds and Huron's exotical things. So, you want hand heels, let's give him hand heels. You have the iPad that Philip showed you. There was this Sion hand heel. This is ARM, ARM Linux. The Jopi, this is a very interesting machine that almost nobody knows about. Who knows about the Jopi? Two persons, you see? Ah, no. That was a very good machine with a keyboard, like an iPad, but with a keyboard. Very interesting. I don't know why it didn't make a big headline. This is a sad story, the computer that. Yeah, I will. I will tell you. I will tell you this anecdote about the computer, so you have something to remember and to tell about this conference. Do you know the computer? Yeah, I will explain that. The computer was a CPU developed in India, and the aim, the objective of the project, was to produce a low-cost CPU that could power a device that would be cheap, not expensive, to bridge the digital divide in India. I mean, cheap computers for people in India. And believe it or not, the Indians succeeded 
on developing the future CPUs. And it was very good. And it was working. And they made the machines. And it was running. And they contacted me. They said, oh, Bill is running on the SimPuture. This thing is the only thing that runs on the SimPuture. So let's work together and make this browser the official browser of the SimPuture. And I was very happy. But that was two years ago. And suddenly, I stopped receiving any emails from the SimPuture guys. I mean, uh, I was receiving mails, 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 and coordinating at some point of time to stop. Hmm. Well, I, I always wondered what happened until one year later, another friend of mine told me what happened. This computer, and I want to stress that, was a success. It was cheap and it could provide internet access and several things at a price that's much lower than the current price. So this is a disruptive technology that changes the market. I mean, if you learn that you can use a device for 100 euros or something like that to access the internet and several things, well, you stop buying the really expensive stuff unless you really need it. So there are very economical, a very powerful economical forces behind this. And what happened? What happens? Microsoft got to be one of the sponsors of the Sync Future project. You can make a lots, lots of conclusions from that story. And one of them is that this technology is real. And that the current conditions and the prices that the people has, have to pay for accessing internet and computer services is artificial. The powerful corporations are rising that price to a point where they optimize their income. And that's why you don't get computers like this new and at cheaper prices. That you can work perfectly. Because it's much better business business to sell, let's say, 2,000 uh, euros new notebooks and things like that. I will skip that one. Yeah. Well, I was speak about the current features of the browser now and then I will show you some demos. Deal is able to handle a very good subset of HTML. The image formats that are custom in the internet, PNG, JPEG and GIF. Streamed rendering including tables. Do you know what streaming rendering is? Does it mean that you start displaying a, a table when it's downloading the table? Yeah. Okay. You don't wait till the end, of, well, till the, the, yeah. the page but is does loaded. Does everybody understand that explanation? Let's say If you have a slow connection, thin connection to your computer, and you have a big page, and you have to get that page here as a whole, 
before showing the information, we have the World Wide Web. <laughs> I, you do not know that. So that's that's the world wide wait. Yeah, for those that don't believe this is wait. Yeah. And I will show you a couple of demos now. One second to start on this machine. And this is the current version that, well, you can get from the website. The bookmarks. Well, this is a small page, it's just 20 kilobytes. And I will show you about the LSM. Huge page example. Well, did you notice how much time did it take to render? This is 20 kilobytes. Look, I go back and I go forward. Back and forward. Back and forward. Yeah, it's too fast to notice. And that's why I will show you a huge page. Please look here. That's 2.2 megabytes on HTML page. Have you tried to load something like that? Yeah, and you know what happens. And now I will do this on this machine. On 96 megabytes of memory. It will take near Fifteen seconds, and that is this range. This means that you can have a network connection that is this fast, and Dilo wouldn't be a bottleneck. Ah, it's. Um, well, it's not very easy to show, but this is a large page, and this can't be smaller. But I will show you how large is it by showing you the index that Dillo constructs. This is an index of the page that was made while Dillo was loading it. thought that it was tiny. And that's the index, and that's it. Let's look, for instance, anyone. Uh, converters, for instance. And you can jump to the... Well, with this demo, I can. Uh, the thing that I want to show you is that this thing is really fast, even on a low power CPU. Okay. And if you remember where we were, well, I will continue with the features, and then I will show you a demo about streamed rendering. Okay. Of this example, I will show you. Uh, was it understood? Uh, 
Now that's the size of people, around 40 times less than other brushes. 40 times less, I mean, the tarball is just 400 kilobytes. And the package is around 200. I mean something like an RPM or TGC or dot .dev or whatever you want. Oh, that's a low estimation. But I made the timers today. Yeah, I use it to run it on this machine and you can also use it there. This last point is very important. The code base of Dill is not a mess. It's very well documented, so it's easy to advance the project. And we have taken pretty much care about that. So there's no need for a rewrite. Now look at this one first. It is 0.4 megabytes. And if you make the division, you get 40 times. That's where that number comes. And uh, oh, please raise your hands, the ones that understand this. One person. Uh, yeah, I will explain this. Yeah. This is virtual size, and this is the real segment size. When a program is running under a kernel-like Linux, the program needs this amount of money, of money now, of memory. Maybe it's a higher amount of money. But this is memory. But only a small part of that memory is in the real ship. This amount is called the real segment size and the whole thing is the virtual. When you're here and you need to access this, you have to page. And paging means Asking for some memory, usually to get out of here and getting this there from the disk, from the hard disk. Have you ever had your hard disk going mad? Like zzzz, well, that's paging. So, when you see that Mozilla needs 52 megabytes of virtual memory, uh, there you know why the machine became uh, Stress it when you don't have large amounts of memory. And here I'm talking about six megabytes is enough as virtual for Lilo. I mean, it can be fully inside the memory of a small computer, so it's very, very fast. And the real is three megabytes. How can you measure? I'm sorry? How can we measure uh, that stand? Uh, you mean that table? Ah, there's a command. You go to the to a terminal. And you uh, use something like PS. Yes. And there you have the data for the thing. But in the upper part, you have the explanation of this. Yeah. So if you do something like this, you can see where the the numbers come from. This is the currently the, the one that's running currently, the one that I used for the demo. 
And if you say, oh, you're cheating, this is 6 megabyte, and the table said 5 megabytes. Oh, yeah, 5 megabytes upon start. But I loaded a 2.2 megabytes file. And that's in memory. Well, now, before going to the architecture overview, I will show you a demo of stream and rendering. You will load a page that is custom for slash dot and with this 3000 means uh, like 3 kilobytes per second. That's the simulation, like a dial up, a slow dial up. And the important thing is here in the slash dot you have a long table and Dilo will start rendering the table before it is completely downloaded. Yeah? So you can start reading almost immediately. And you don't need to wait. This is about the worldwide wait. See there is the left column and it is rendering down and then you got the main part. And here comes another column that will come later, but you can start reading there and of course you can be scrolling there. Yeah, and the page is still coming, and then it stopped. Once again. There's the left column, the main part. If I run fast, here's the scrolling. And there, it will suddenly appear the third column. Yeah. So then how come it for your MySQL uh, sorry. how come it for a two megabyte MySQL manual page you have to wait fifteen seconds for it to appear? Did you change something in the configuration of the way the page is loaded or nothing? Because for a MySQL page you have to wait. You didn't render it while uh, yeah, 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 now I understand your question. Yeah. The point is that with the main MySQL page you have the opposite problem. You are not waiting for a small stream to come. You have a a huge bandwidth because it was got mm -hmm. from the hard disk. Mm -hmm. And in that case, when you have, let's say, chunks okay. of 500 megabytes, it is better to wait a bit and then render it instead of uh, issuing, let's say, 400 renderings. So if, if you had loaded this MySQL manual with the same 3, three kilobyte bandwidth limit, limitation, we would have seen the rendering yeah. being done while you loaded yeah, the page. Right. right. And you can uh, check that on mailing lists. No. Sometimes you have huge pages. And okay. In Germany, one guy told me that he was able to render a 16 megabyte page with the load. Yeah, it was a Debian mailing list archive or something like that. I will go with a small explanation about this. I don't want to get into too much detail. The parser is the part of the browser that analyzes the data and that makes the rendering. And the rendering is what we have been talking about. It's making the HTML into images, into what you see. <laughs> well, that's the input-output in Dilo. The input-output in Dilo is non-blocking. Well, I, 
I haven't prepared a demo for that, but you can have, let's say, five, six, seven, ten websites loading at the same time. And it will not block. And the plugins is an interesting idea that makes the load into a core rendering and helper applications that are independent processes, different processes. For the ones that think that this is too slow, the bookmarks is a plugin. This application is a plugin, an independent process that communicates with Dill. Oh, that's the wrong button. That's the right button. If I go here to the bookmarks, an independent process will talk with Dillo and give the page. Look at this. Too slow? Incredibly quick. Yeah, this is a way to extend the I mean, you have here the core rendering. Developers know that uh, in free software, we lack of a very good uh, HTML rendering library. There's key HTML, TTK HTML, and several large libraries. In certain way, you can use Vue as a rendering library. For email, does anyone, anybody know here uh, Silk here? Something like Silk here. This is a mail user agent. Well, this is a mail program that when we see when receiving HTML documents, it embeds a deal inside and shows it. Just as if it was a library. Yeah? So you can use Dillo in that way. And the other way to extend the browser is let's say you have a database here, a very important database with secret files and you want to have access to it, but you can write a plugin for Dillo and make it communicate with the database and with Dillo and that's it. You don't have to care about the rendering in that because it's done here. You paste here HTTP. This does anybody know FullTick? FLTK? Nobody. One. One person. Well, the most well known libraries for doing graphical programs like this are GTK, either one or two, PDE. Those are the most renowned. There are several others. One of those is Pook. And everybody knows this as FLTK. But I say FullTick because the guys there insist in it that it's called FullTick. And they have been very nice with me. So I say FullTick. Well, we are moving the browser. We are porting it to FullTick 2.0 instead of going with GTK number two, because GTK number two was too big and too slow for us. I mean, maybe three times bigger and maybe twice as slow. 
So well, we decided for the other one after several studies. Oh, don't worry, I will not explain these parts. Two dance. But there's one very important point here, and it is that our current demo, the demo that we can download from the website, is GTK1 basic. And the one that we are working in, we, I mean the developers, is full tip two things. And this new library means for us this benefits. Text anti-aliasing. Do, do you know what is that? Yeah, most people. UTF-8 GTK1 doesn't handle UTF-8 right. That's a full story that I don't want to get into. It's more size than GTK2 and GTK1 including. Lower CPU requirements. Full tick is designed for embedded systems. This is fast, light, and this is toolkit. Yeah, we are going for, for that because of the reasons of we want to run on low power hardware. The rendering portability will we'll be able to get to more machines. Statical linking, that's important. You can put, uh, do you know what statical linking is? Well, in a nutshell, statical linking is getting a library inside the binary of the program. So you have here the library, and here you have the program, everything in the same file. And what is this good for? Ah, because with the statical linking, you can make a statical needle and place it on a PDA, for instance. And don't worry about library dependencies. Do I have this and that and this and this and this? I'll just take a read at that. Uh, I don't want to explain every one of them because the persons that are interested in can can ask if. And that way I avoid boring everyone else. This is interesting for embedded devices. Nano X. Well, I'm going to start finishing the, the presentation with this slide and the final demo. About the integrated bag meter, well, I'll talk it about a bit. Well, that's, that's the part of the browser that shows you the HTML problems inside it. Maybe that's only of interest for webmasters. Is there a webmaster here? No. Ah, you more, more or less. More or less? Well, you can review your site by browsing with Dillo to it, and you will have the count of mistakes right there. You don't have to use another thing. 
So you go there, look at the patients, oh, I made a mistake, and you can edit them and then make good HTML for everybody to see. That's the point of the bug meter. Now, well, please excuse me, I would like to have more accurate information about UC Linux, but I have too many things on my mind before coming to Europe from Chile. And I saw a, a CD, and I'm 80% sure that it, one of the distribution was UC Linux based and it was running the deal over it. It was using key drive instead of the X server. Do you know key drive? No, and it doesn't matter. Well, I'll talk to you about timelines and estimations. Now, where did I put the shock? You know the false stem? I know Philippe does. Well, the false stem is another conference. False stem. It's more technically oriented. Uh, I had the pleasure to make a presentation there. And it was in, uh, late February or the beginning of March, right? Well, that's more or less four months ago. Four months ago. And when I was talking there, this 42 based Dillo was a plan. Just a plan. We had everything very well studied, but not a single line of code was written. And the amazing thing is that now here at the LSM, I will show you a prototype of Jill running over 42. That, for those that are developers, it's a record. It's an incredibly fast port. We had to get rid of the libraries DDK and GTK. The whole toolkit. Almost no project there to change that. And we made that. We switched to full tip. We switched some parts of the code from C to C++ because full tip is in C++. We made a new abstraction layer. We ported the input output engine. Wrote a new user interface on the full tip and integrated the whole thing to run even with the plugins in that time. It was a crazy time that I spent with the other main developers, Sebastian Gerken in Germany, just developing that. But we made it in small time. Well, the time to recover later was uh, <laughs> important, but that can be done. The important point here is not you to remember this, but that when you have a small project, not too many thousand or million lines of code. You can do things like that. It is much easier to adapt or to tailor small software. It's more dynamical. Yeah, that's an important lesson. If you ever go developing and you have a huge code base or dependencies on huge libraries, the time for changing or adapting your project will grow a lot. Well, I can show you the prototype. And what people here know this tool, LDD? Ah, everybody, excellent. That's no, not everybody, but. 
We will get this. LDD. That's the current DILU. And that's the list of library dependencies. And when I filter them, looking for DDK and DTK, well, there you have them. And to prove that I'm <coughs> cheating, I will go to the prototype directory and show you the dependencies for Dijon Fultica. Or Dijon, the same. Well, this looks like a longer or larger list, and it is. But this is because we are linking to the anti-aliasing libraries of X. It is very simple in Fulti to disable that and you get a smaller list of dependencies. But I want to show you the anti-aliasing, so that's there. And for you not to stress your eyes, No GDK, there's no GTK. This is a prototype. Repeat after me. This is a prototype. Well, but we will show you more or less that our progress. This is still running over Fultic 2.0, a library that's not currently released. This is the user interface with Fultic primitives. It looks very much like the other, but it's a completely different browser. And as you see, we are rendering HTML with tables. We have the same user interface. Well, this user interface is able to change the panel size dynamically and it has some more functionality than the old one. But the point here is we already have the HTML decoder, the text decoder, running, working, progress bars, And the uh, images are not integrated inside this prototype yet. But we have some code that is rendering images. So it's just a matter of picking up the other part, and put it inside this, and we'll have that. And I want to show you this. This is using that URL, that's a file. I'm listing this directory. And why is this important? Because when you want to access your hard disk, you will use a plugin. That's another external program. So, this prototype is also doing the plugins. It works with all the plugins, it does the rendering, and so on. So, what do we need to make it our next release? Well, just polishing what we have. So, the main point of this demo is the full tick based version of Dillo is not vaporware. It is running on this machine and on another machine in Dortmund. Now, but nowhere else in the world. <laughs> but it is running, it, it exists.
Well, the final words which, with which I want to close this conference are a couple of things about funding. Uh, Dilo Projects has been running for uh, five and a half years without any funding from outside. And the sad thing about this is that we have a very good web browser that can do several things in a random distinct future, for instance. And that we could have much more two years ago if only the two main developers were funded to work 100% of the time on it. Doing a web browser is no amateur task. It's a very complex software project. And me and Sebastian are working on our spare time. And we have the knowledge to have now SSL, frames, tabs, and well, Foltic, anti-aliasing, and lots of things. Well, but Sebastian has to attend his regular job, and I do have to find out how to live. And that's the only problem. It's not a problem of expertise. It's not a problem of knowledge, of lack of technology. It's just a problem of lack of money. But the problem is bigger than it seems because there are huge corporate interests that are opposed to this project. Well, I have some conversations with a German company that I hope to thrive, and they are very advanced on trying to fund Dillo 